Hey everybody, my name is Ryan Swanson. I'm the head coach for Team 6045 and a regular contributor here on Fun. Uh, welcome to the first episode of the year of Fun Analysis. We're going to be diving into the first playoff match of the year at ISR number one. Uh, you know, first playoff match of the year and we've already broken 200 points. So we'll go through the match, find out how they did it, and uh, dive into the bigger implications for Reevescape and how, uh, how the season will play out. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. So kicking things off, we're going to start out in autonomous. We're going to be watching primarily Alliance number one, uh, comprised of teams 1690, uh, 56 14 and 59 28. Uh, 56 14 snuck out the number one seed, uh, edging out 1690, who made a comeback at the end of, of Qualls. Um, 1690, obviously the number one overall pick, and then 59 28, their third robot. Um, you know, we're going to focus on the one alliance because they did something that I think a lot of people didn't expect this year. Uh, they had a very, very impressive performance that we'll dive into. So I'm going to kick things off. We're going to start out in the autonomous mode and we're going to watch the red alliance 1690 is going to do a four piece autonomous mode here uh, meanwhile 40 56 14 they're going to do a three piece uh, and then 59 28 you notice they they went in with a mobility and then a l1 auto so coming out of autonomous right here let me hit play one more time you're going to see that after the mobility points get applied we have the Red Alliance with 61 points right out of auto. Um, obviously, the Blue Alliance with 12. Um, this this matchup was kind of over in auto, right? Uh, 61 points is going to be extremely competitive pretty far into the season, I imagine. Um, my thought is, if you're putting up 61 in auto, you're probably winning. Uh, you're probably scoring more than, than most alliances will in quals, uh, probably through, through most of week one. So... Being that uh, we're just kicking off Teleop now, uh, we're going to watch 5928. They're going to sneak over. They're going to be playing defense on the Blue Alliance uh, for the large majority of the match until at which point they're going to come back and park. Um, 1690, you're going to watch them. They're going to initially pick Algae out of the reef, and they're going to go right to the net with it. And 5928 is going to go right into Coral Cycling. So... 1690 is going to do what I'm going to call super cycles. They pick up at Coral uh, while scoring algae on the way. That's a feature of their ground intake. Um, they're going to they're going to keep plugging away. So they're going to score. They're going to pick up algae, score algae in the net, and watch them right here. Uh, they missed their second attempt at scoring algae. So keep note of that as we get into the later portion of the match. Um, basically. We're going to talk a little bit about missed opportunities and how th this alliance could have increased their scoring ceiling. Uh, that was one opportunity right there. So they, they go back, they score another algae here. In total, you'll find that they throw three of them into the net um, in addition to uh, many coral cycles. So they're going to f grab their third algae, again, a super cycle where they pick up coral. And this will be their final algae that they score into the net. I want to point out that we are... You know, barely into Teleop. We've got a minute 33 left. Alliance 1 is already up over 100 points. Uh, meanwhile, you're going to notice the Blue Alliance, they're actually processing some algae. So they're getting six points for, for scoring that algae in the processor, but they're also giving the Red Alliance uh, four points for each algae that they process. Uh, and so you're going to find to in total, their Blue Alliance is effectively giving the Red Alliance uh, 12 points throughout the course of this match. As we get into the, the middle of the match here, we're going to find the Red Alliance uh, cycling very efficiently. So in total, 1690 is going to score 16 Coral in Teleop. Uh, meanwhile, 5614 is going to score 14 of their own. And uh, I mean, it's, watching them go, it's very impressive. This is kind of the bread and butter of a high-level match. You're going to see uh, two robots going to town on the reef. It's going to be, um, <laughs> we're going to see a lot of this as the season goes on. 
And I mean, really, you notice one thing: they're they're undefended, right? Um, when you're when you're dealing with a high level alliance like this, especially when you're an eight alliance trying to pull off a, an upset against number one, a powerful number one alliance, um, you should probably be considering playing defense. Now, uh, the number eight alliance did have the misfortune of having a tipped over robot. It's possible that they intended to go play defense and didn't have the opportunity. Um, but, but forward thinking here, um, if you're against this red number one alliance, playing defense on them is definitely going to be the way to go. We're coming into the end game now, and you're going to notice I'm going to pause right when both red robots kind of make their way over to do their deep climb. So I think they're both done scoring now. I want to point out L4 completely full. L3 completely full. There is one coral missing over here from L2, and then they've actually got three L1 scored. A uh, reminder, one of those came in auto, and then 1690 actually scored two of them in teleop. So again, 1690 was 16 teleop cycles uh, with coral, three teleop cycles with algae for a total of 19, uh, and then you've got 5614 that ran 14 coral cycles in teleop, in addition to their three in auto. So it's week one. I want to remember that. Keep that in mind. Week one, and we have a nearly full reef, uh, all but one on L2, uh, ignoring L1, of course. So what I'd like to point out as well is the Red Alliance would later in Finals 1, they would actually fill up the reef, um, levels two through four. And... Uh, Again, it's week one. This is insane. And granted, not every event, not every uh, alliance is going to have uh, 1690, a world champion, um, scoring 23 game pieces in a match. That's not going to be very frequent, uh, especially in early weeks here. But it's going to be it's a little eye opening to see how far we are in week one. So I'm going to keep going here, uh, show that 1690 and 5614 are both going to get their deep climbs. Uh, both extremely efficient. I want to point out they went over at about 18 seconds, and they're both hanging with time to spare. Uh, 59.28, very well driven. I want to I want to go back, and this is how it should look for your third robot. If you're sneaking into park, you just sneak your way in, get across the tape, and look at this human player too. I want to point out very well done. Um, to ensure that 5928 doesn't disrupt their alliance partners on the climb. So watch the human players watching 5928, and they give a signal the moment that they get in uh, to the tape. So that's two points, easy way for them to communicate that. And <laughs> let, let's just keep going and we'll see the final score. And the final score of the first playoff match of 2025, of course, the Red Alliance taking the win. Uh, 223 points, an event high score, and a world high score. Uh, 221 of those were clean. There was a two-point penalty on the Blue Alliance. So here we are, week one, 223 points scored. There was some debate as to whether, uh, you know, would we or wouldn't we break 200? Well, uh, this high-powered number one alliance from ISR number one uh, blew that out of the water. So what does that mean going forward? I'm going to, I'm going to kick this back and we're going to watch the match uh, over again as I talk about what I think are the implications from uh, what we've seen from the first real play of Reefscape. Now, again, like I mentioned, not every event is going to have a 1690. Take, take their performance for what it is, uh, an elite week one performance from a world champion um, you know, I think 5614 is amazing, uh, and they're probably more indicative of like your top regular top robot at a week one event. So taking 1690 out of the equation, uh, you've got 5614 putting up three in auto, uh, 14 in teleop. I think that's going to be pretty common um, for your you know your top alliance top uh, captain type robots at other events. So. I don't think we're going to have to be concerned with the reef filling up in, in the early weeks necessarily, but looking forward to the world championship, right? Let's consider the Red Alliance f nearly filled the reef and then later on in finals one did fill the reef, ignoring level one with two robots. Granted, they're being they're not being defended, um, but two robots effectively in week one are filling L2 through L4. So now imagine a scenario where their third robot, rather than playing defense, um, either they're uh, algae specialists. Let's let's take a pause in the match here, 
and count up the number of algae available to that third robot if they were an algae specialist and focusing on, on offense. So we've got one, two, three, four, five algae just hanging out on the ground. And actually uh, six, I missed this one too. So there's six algae just hanging out. You know, uh, a third alliance member could very easily be playing cleanup with algae, going to the net or even processing it. And uh, they wouldn't be disruptive of the two, you know, top coral robots. So that would be one option is having the third robot contribute uh, to potentially, what would that be? Uh, 28 algae points if they went straight to the net. And consider the fact that there's one, two, I think there's a third one somewhere over here, uh, right, right back here, three algae on the opponent alliance. So you potentially got nine algae that a third robot could be uh, cleaning up and scoring another 36 points on 221 points clean that this alliance already did. So one option, uh, algae specialist that could push the ceiling higher. Another option would actually be an L1 and algae specialist. So you clean up the algae on your side, and then you spam L1 uh, with your third robot. And really, if you think about the every bot, if you think about the kit bot, those robots are designed for that exact purpose. So in future events, in a, you know typical week one through, let's say, week three or four events, there's going to be a robot available that can score low. Uh, late in the draft, there'll be, you know, numerous kit bot, numerous every bot type robots at every event. So another option, if you want to go the triple, triple offense route would be spam L1 while your top two fill L2 through L4. Um, let's consider there are 63 coral that you could potentially score. You could fit 27 in theory on L1 and then obviously 36 going through uh, L L2 through L4. I'm going to make a prediction. Maybe, I don't know if you'd call it a bold take or what, but I don't think it's a hot take, but I'm, I'm of the opinion that we will never see 63 coral scored on a reef, at least not, not for a very long time. And, and I'll put it out there that I don't think we ever will. So people, a lot of people are talking about, wow, this game is broken. Wow. Um, the GDC is going to have to do something about, the, uh, you know, like supercharging in 2023, they're going to have to maybe add more algae to the reef. They're going to have to change something fundamentally about the game because people feel that it's broken. I would push back and say that I don't think any, we're going to see anything like that, uh, largely because I don't think we're going to see a full reef. Uh, there's, there's also elements of play with algae. Um, you've got, you've got nine algae on your side. The opponent has nine algae on their side. I think we're going to see it become pretty commonplace, especially later in the year, where L2 through L4 get filled. That's a regular thing. And then alliances are going to have to determine how they win on the margins, right? So with winning on the margins, that's going to be uh, scoring your nine algae, making sure that isn't available to the opponent, while also potentially still, you know, sending your robot to go steal algae, um, if you score 10, the opponent can only score eight. That's an eight point differential in your favor. And at high levels of play, that might be enough to swing, swing the match for your alliance to win. I think we're going to see algae become a little bit like the can wars in 2015, where if you win the war, uh, the algae war, you're going to be in a very good position to win the match. Now there's a lot I could say. There's a lot of implications that that this match could have on the future of reefscape but i do want to take a step back and appreciate the greatness that is 1690 coming off a world championship and uh not missing a beat there many saw their reveal video and said wow they did it again and their first event performance is absolutely true uh, a shout out to 5614 as well and then their partner 5928 congratulations on the first win of the year I'm really excited to see where things go from here. And uh, I think despite, you know, some concerns about how does how does the, the game play out, given that we're so, so advanced already, um, despite those concerns, we're in for a fun year of Reefscape, and I'm excited to see how it goes. So again, uh, my name is Ryan Swanson. Thank you so much for watching Funalysis, and look out for more of these as we go throughout the year. I know I'm, I'm signed up to do roughly one per week, so uh, looking forward to this, and have a great night. 
Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.